All right. Well, here we go. Welcome, everybody, to the first news, standalone news video. I'm really excited about it. There were a lot of titles for this video kind of thrown out there by a lot of people. Some people were suggesting like, oh, the, the Vape News Network or the or the Grim Network or the Grim News or, so, or, or something along those lines. But I was brainstorming with Ruby Roo and we were trying to come up with a name for this new weekly video series. And uh, here's where we landed. So welcome to the 510 Report, where we're going to be talking about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. And speaking of general goings on, last night was the MTV VMA Awards, where the Truth Campaign had a couple of commercials. We've all been seeing these commercials, at least I've been seeing them kind of all over social media, and uh, vapors in general are really very upset by these truth campaign videos, and rightly so. They're mostly not true, and they're presented in a way that's just kind of really smarmy and kind of underhanded. I genuinely don't know a lot of people that take the truth campaign seriously. You can get on Google and spend two minutes Googling around to find out that, oh, okay, the Truth Campaign is actually funded by Big Tobacco. The Truth Campaign in general has always been sort of a little bit, ah, I hate to use this word, it's always been a little bit cringy. It's always been a little bit, hey, what's up, fellow youths? Let's talk about smoking. The Truth Campaign has always come across to me as guys in suits in a boardroom trying to appeal to youth. The Truth Campaign, I believed, aired two commercials during the VMAs. I only saw one of them, and I saw the other one on social media, and one of them that they said was talking about the jewel, how one jewel cartridge, one jewel pod equals 20 regular cigarettes and this is a uh, this is some this is for some reason a very bad thing that part of the commercial they actually got pretty right one jewel pod nicotine by volume does essentially equal 20 regular cigarettes which is why if you are a pack a day smoker and you vape one jewel pod throughout the whole day then you're getting your equivalents if of nicotine and not actually burning combustible tobacco cigarettes. Although the whole jewel pod equaling one whole pack of cigarettes might be true right now, but Juul is planning on introducing lower nicotine strengths, so that commercial, that particular truth commercial where they're calling out Juul is really only going to be accurate until Juul releases lower nicotine pods, which they are doing, 30% nicotine pods, or not 30%, 3% nicotine pods will be available soon, which will then make that truth commercial uh, not factual. And then at the end of the first commercial that I saw, the Jewel commercial, they say something along the lines of, safer doesn't mean safe, which is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. Safer doesn't mean safe. Well, yeah, safer has never meant safe, Safer means safer. It is safer to vape a jewel than it is to smoke an entire pack of cigarettes. It's also safer to put on your seat belt than it is to not put on your seat belt. It's also safer to put on a helmet when you ride your motorcycle than not put on a helmet when you ride your motorcycle. Safer means safer. You see, harm reduction isn't a foreign concept necessarily to the general public, but because of the way that these truth commercials are presented to the general public, it's presented in a real kind of smarmy, shady, like backhanded way. Putting on your seatbelt, yes, is a form of harm reduction. Putting on your helmet when you ride a motorcycle, yes, is a form of harm reduction. In San Francisco, they have needle exchanges for addicts, which is a form of harm reduction. Eating a salad instead of eating a donut and Doritos is a form of harm reduction. You're trying to reduce the harm in your life. Vapors are trying to reduce their harm in their life. Safer doesn't mean safe, but safer 
always means safer. The second truth commercial that I saw was actually completely factually baseless. There was a big graphic on the screen that said fact. If you vape, you are four times more likely to start smoking cigarettes, which again, you can spend two minutes on Google and search around and see that that's absolutely, completely not true. Smoking rates worldwide and in the United States are the lowest they have ever been. Youth smoking rates in the United States are the lowest they have ever been. There is right now zero evidence that shows if you vape, you're four times more likely to start smoking cigarettes. That's just that's just a lie. And I'm not here to discredit the truth organization. I think they do a pretty good job of that themselves, but you can get on Google, like I said, two minutes searching around to fact check these truth commercials and see that eh, it's a lot of half truths and the way that those half truths are being presented is in a really shady, smarmy way. I do also find it incredibly interesting that with this platform of having a commercial during the VMAs, which is, you know, a big public event, maybe not to everybody, but sure, for certain age demographics, the VMAs is like, it's a thing, it's a big thing. And when you have a platform like that to have a commercial on the VMAs, it's really interesting that the Truth Campaign decided to go after vaping, which has caused ah, two deaths, I think. And that wasn't even because of vaping, that was because of battery negligence. Interesting to me that they went after vaping and not after tobacco, which causes over 400,000 deaths every year in the United States and not after opiates, which cause, I think in 2016, something around the range of 68,000 deaths from opioid abuse. And believe it or not, opioid abuse is one of the platforms that the truth campaign sort of champions for as well. But I have yet to see them go after anything but vaping. So with that said, remember to take anything that the truth campaign says with a grain of salt, considering that they are funded by Big Tobacco. And if you ever see studies or papers or research or headlines where they say things like, you know, vaping contains the same thing that's in cigarettes or vaping has these toxic chemicals, the same thing in cigarettes. Vaping is harm reduction. So if it's not being compared to that that is causing us harm, then it's useless useless information. So we are going to talk about California in just one second, but I did want to mention uh, Dean. Yeah, Dean the Vaping Biker did a fantastic video that I definitely, definitely will be linking to down in the description of this video, but his video is all about the state of vaping right now in the UK. Believe it or not, in the UK, vaping has been getting some uh, some anti-vapingness happening to it. It's been coming under a, a little bit of heavy fire, despite the fact that the BBC is releasing news reports saying things like vaping can be a big weapon in the fight against tobacco, and despite things like the Royal College of Physicians and doctors and MPs all praising vaping, a lot of the media in the UK is kind of turning and, and taking a firmer stance and taking a really, it feels a very awkward stance when you have this much science that is pro-vaping and when you have scientists in the UK that are very, very pro-vaping pro saying things like, if you're a smoker and you're thinking of switching to vaping, you should do it without hesitation. It's still falling under a little bit of attack in the UK and the vaping biker, Dean, you did a fantastic job. He put together an unbelievable video. I highly suggest uh, everybody go watch it. I'll be linking to it down in the description, but thank you, Dean, for that fantastic video. And another thing that's been going around on social media are these signs. I smoked for X amount of years. I quit using this flavor of vapor product. This is something that was started actually a few years ago. I want to say it was 2015, but it might have actually been 2016. We were at a vape event. I want to say it was VPX in Las Vegas in 2016, but 
but they had a bunch of these signs printed out and they were big signs and so a lot of us we all filled in how long we smoked for and what flavor uh, you know we were able to s completely switch to vaping with and we all took a bunch of pictures and we all posted them on social media and then that's kind of that's kind of as far as it went at that time, but it's recently been rekindled thanks to one of my advocacy heroes, JBC, Jennifer Berger Coleman, just one of the most spectacularly awesome people on the planet. So you can go over to Instagram and search for the hashtag adults like flavors and you'll see everybody, everybody holding their signs. And my mission to you guys is to fill that up, to make that hashtag even more powerful than it is right now. I think we have something like two to 3,000 photos right now of that particular sign using that particular hashtag. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna post a link in the description to a high resolution, you know, JPEG of that particular sign. You can print it out, you can fill it out, and you can take a picture of yourself holding it and just be truthful and completely honest. Put how long you smoked for and what flavor it was that finally got you to switch over to vaping. For me, it was cola. And this isn't just like a big social media blitz sort of campaign awareness things. These are actually going to be very, very useful. You can DM your pictures to Jennifer Berger Coleman on Instagram. <laughs> What? I'm gonna try to keep these videos uh, burp free, but you know, one's gonna get by. Look, this is the first episode. It's, it's gonna be a little bit rough until we really like find our groove here. So you can DM to Jennifer Berger Coleman on Instagram or you can email them to her at jbcoleman at gmail.com. JBC lives in the capital of California in Sacramento, California. So she is going to be using these to help vaping in, I mean, not just in California, but in Sacramento right now, there's a flavor ban on the books. It's not a law yet. It has a lot more stages to go through, but we're going to be using these signs and pictures to hopefully help fight this flavor ban that's happening in Sacramento. It's a quick and easy and actually very, very helpful and useful thing to do. So I would encourage everybody to get involved with this. Like I said, super simple. There's a link in the description. You print it out, you fill it out, you take a picture, you post it on social media and you use the hashtag adults like flavors. And this is gonna be, this is gonna be like my plea to the vaping community on social media right now. I really want this adults like flavors hashtag to be an effective hashtag. So please, don't use the adults like flavors hashtag unless you're posting a picture of yourself with this sign or reposting a picture of someone else with this sign. When someone from the California Department of Public Health clicks on the adults like flavors hashtag, I want them to see thousands and thousands and thousands of people, vapors, that quit using traditional tobacco cigarettes through vaping using flavors because hashtag adults like flavors. So use the sign, use the hashtag, but only use the hashtag if it's in a, you know, don't post hand checks with the hashtag, please. Don't post just pictures of bottles with the hashtag. Don't post sales for your shop or your online store and use the hashtag adults like flavors. Just, just don't do it. We want this hashtag to remain an advocacy centric hashtag and actually be a useful thing uh, on social media platforms. And we may not actually get to what I wanted to talk about in California, but that's okay. We can save it for next week because the last thing Last thing I wanted to talk about was fruits and vegetables with nicotine in them. So I've seen some pictures and some videos on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram where people are posting pictures of a tomato and it says, warning, this, you know, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an ad addictive chemical. Or they show a picture of an eggplant with the same warning on it. Or they show pictures of potatoes with the same warning on it. And it's kind of done in that way that's like, hey, FD, 
FDA. Well, what about all the nicotine that's in potatoes? Is nicotine a tobacco product now too? So I just wanted to get some clarification out there. I think that we as a community need to be as informed as possible, especially on things like this, and especially on things that when, if they're used incorrectly, it's just going to make us look silly and making that nicotine vegetable, you know, tomato, potato comparison, uh, it does kind of make us look a little bit silly and I don't think we should be using it. And this isn't intended in any capacity to call anybody out or call anybody stupid for doing it. I just wanna make sure that we all have the same correct information regarding things like this. So yes, there is nicotine in eggplants, there is nicotine in tomatoes, and there is definitely nicotine in potatoes. It's not a lot of nicotine, it's some nicotine. Nicotine is a naturally occurring thing in a lot of plants and fruits and vegetables. And no, those fruits and vegetables are not regulated by the FDA as tobacco products, even though they do have nicotine in them. The difference is the way that your body processes these foods. There's a reason why we don't just eat tobacco. And it's the same reason why you don't get addicted to tomatoes. It's the same reason why if you stop eating tomatoes, you don't go through like tomato withdrawals and like, oh God, I, you know, I got to have a tomato. I got to get that nicotine in my body. It's because when you eat something, your body processes it differently. When you eat a potato, the small amount of nicotine that's in potatoes, and you guys, it is a, a very small amount. Same goes for potatoes. You would have to eat like 15 pounds of eggplant to get the nicotine that would equal one cigarette. So we has very low levels of nicotine in them. And when you eat them, when you digest them, the nicotine in the eggplant or the tomato or the potato isn't released into your bloodstream through your stomach. Like I said, there's a reason we don't just eat tobacco because if you just ate tobacco, the nicotine would be digested by your stomach and it wouldn't be released into your bloodstream. That's the reason why people smoke tobacco. Smoking or vaping tobacco will release the nicotine directly into your bloodstream via your lungs. So yes, while things like tomatoes and potatoes and eggplants do all have nicotine in them, it's not the same as tobacco. And I think in order to keep us from looking very misinformed and honestly uh, a little bit silly, I think we actually need to stop with the comparisons to tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants because it's it's completely, completely different. And I think if we keep making those sort of eggplant tobacco comparisons, it's just going to make us look very, very uninformed and not having a, a firm grasp on the science at hand. And again, this isn't intended to call anybody out or make anybody feel dumb or silly, but I just think that moving forward, yeah, I think, I think we definitely need to stop the comparisons to eggplants, tomatoes, and potatoes. So unfortunately, we're not going to get to talk about California this week, but that's okay because we are going to talk about it next week in the 510 Report. And I'm gonna end this video right now by reminding everybody to join CASA. It's free and easy to sign up. You follow the calls to action. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of state and local governments that are trying to tax and ban and restrict and limit your access to life saving vapor products and CASA is a way to effectively fight against these things. Additionally, I'm gonna post some links down in the description so where you can find your representatives, you can find your senators. Remember that these government employees, they work for us, so we have the freedom to contact them directly and express our concerns about how they are handling certain issues. You wanna find out if all your local Congress people support vaping or are anti-vaping, yeah, you can just talk to them. You can just call them. You can request an in-person meeting. I truly, truly, and honestly believe that the only way that we're going to get out of this attack that we're constantly under is 
together and by doing useful and productive things to initiate some real change in the world. Anyway, that is what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Kevin Skipper for this little phrase. You don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. <laughs>